So I'm convinced that uh, babies, they're the only human beings on the entire planet that can successfully pull off a faux hawk. And it's because when you see a baby, you know that it didn't stand in front of the mirror that morning and go like this. Oh, yeah. Mmm. I'm a shark. I am a shark. At least with a baby, you know someone had to do it for them. You're a shark. You're a shark. So, um, I've been married almost a year. We're coming up on our one-year anniversary. Let's hear for Marital Bliss. Thank you. And uh, when we got married, uh, this uh, kind of weird situation happened where I ended up having to move into our apartment six weeks early and live there by myself until we got married. And so um, I never lived alone before, and I never realized that I never lived alone before until I started doing it. And it was very eerie. And furnishing this apartment was just impossible with the few meager, you know, uh, college guy stuff that I had. And so I had this six-week interim period where I was sort of living in this empty shell waiting for my life to start. And I had to make do with the few things that I owned and a couple of gifts that we'd received in advance. And so I'm drinking out of a gravy boat. And uh, <laughs> the only forks I had were these huge decorative salad forks. I'm like King Triton eating my... <laughs> and the worst, though, was that the apartment didn't come with a shower curtain. And so it's this little detail that makes a huge difference. And I was like, well, I guess for six weeks I'm taking baths. But you know what? You set that goal and see how long you last at it. <laughs> and so, you know, obviously two days into it, I'm like, I, if I'm running late. I got to take a shower. I'm just going to suck it up and take a shower without a shower curtain. Weirdest experience of my entire life. <laughs> Step one, tilt shower head as far as you can towards the shower wall. Step two, stand between the spray and the rest of the bathroom becoming the shower curtain. <laughs> and if you've never done this, you do not understand what kind of a safety blanket that acts as, okay? It was so creepy. It was like the rest of the bathroom was watching me. So, I felt so naked. So I have killed so many bugs in my life that uh, I've actually lost count. And I didn't think that was gonna happen when I first started, but I've grown numb to it. And. <laughs> You know, when I first realized that, it was really disturbing. But through the whole experience, I realized that people who are afraid of bugs are completely irrational. Bugs have nothing on us. I could, you know, a bugs could pass down the legend of me for 200 generations, and I would still be alive, and it would still be me that they're talking about. It's like, I don't know what we're so afraid of. A bug has never accidentally squished me, you know? An insect has never held a magnifying glass over my head, intensifying the sun's rays to such a degree that I burst into flames. An arthropod has never ripped the top of my house off and sprayed in chemical gas that killed my entire family while I was off at work only to have me come home to my worst nightmare realized. But I have done all of that and more to bugs. Pixar, I'm sorry, A Bug's Life that does not capture what it is to be a bug. If that movie was any degree of realistic, it would be the most horrific, tasteless, disturbing horror movie ever made. And it would be about six minutes long, so. No, but a bug bit me once. Oh, a bug bit you? Oh, that's, what happened next? Did you squish its little body that has no bones in it with a single finger? Are you the good guy here? Come on. No, no, but dude, a bee stung me once and like my whole calf was numb for like 30 minutes. Oh my, God. Oh, 1800 seconds of discomfort, that is, oh, the bee died. Like that was its last, that was the best shot it had. It gave its life for that. Half an hour later, you're not, you can't even feel a thing, you know? And while we're on it, is no one teaching bees that they only get one shot at this? Because they are awfully cavalier about the way they're spending it. That's all I'm saying. I mean, the slightest provocation, and they're just, man, this guy doesn't want me to be on his sandwich. Well, I'll show him. <laughs> What's happening? That's it's sad to be a bug. So my brother is a huge conspiracy theorist, and he's convinced that we've never landed on the moon. And he's made me watch all these videos with the evidences, the flag is waving, etc. And for me, I don't have an opinion either way, um, but secretly I kind of hope that we did fake the moon landing. 
Because to me, that would be almost more American than to have actually put a man on the moon. Like, that would be a bigger accomplishment in my book to have made a world superpower forfeit the Cold War on a hoax. You know, it's like, I think we should just get crazy and just admit it to him. Just, uh, yeah, hey, Russia, you got pumped. <laughs> but I mean, that's an elaborate hoax. And I would have just loved to have been there fly on the wall during those proceedings because you gotta, that's a lot of work to fake the moon landing. And you know, what, how, how do the casting calls work for something like that? You know, you, you obviously can't say what it is. So you gotta ask all these weird questions. Like, okay, now in this next scene, we're gonna have you walk uh, as if you were on the surface of the moon. Could you show us what uh, you do if you were on the surface of the, uh, okay. Uh, okay. I'm, How's, uh, I don't know. Okay, that's not bad, you sir. Okay, oh, interesting uh, moonwalk, Mr. Uh, Jackson. I don't know why uh, anti-gravity would make you walk backwards, but it's an interesting interpretation. Now, uh, it says here you're willing to become white for the part because that is very important in our day and age. It's essential. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> uh, no, no, that's not clap worthy. No, please. So, um, but this is a true story. Um, an organization recently went through the whole Freedom of Information Act and uh, all the paperwork necessary to have NASA release the footage of the original moon landing to be examined. And when NASA went to look for it, they couldn't find it. And later they discovered that they had taped over it. Okay, 100 points for the conspiracy theorists. Uh, wow, Lassa, you taped over? How could you tape over the moon landing? That's the only thing you've ever done. Like. <laughs> It would never happen anywhere else. No one's ever gonna be like, hey, the guys are here to check out the Constitution. Could, is that all right? Oh, listen, we were out of post-it notes, and so it says call Canada across the top. Is that okay? Because it's like tape over the moon landing. So if there's one industry that I've completely lost faith in, it's uh, the cold cereal industry. There's just no new ideas coming out, you know? I mean, back in the day, there was a golden age where these innovators had these great ideas and really special cereals were created. But today, it's like, it just completely ran dry. And, uh, you know, it's like, I just imagine these guys just, you know, it's like, man, I haven't had a good idea in months. Yeah, me neither. And then they're like, why don't we just make anything that shouldn't be a breakfast cereal into a breakfast cereal? And that's how we got this long line of Oreo O's and Reese's Puffs and Cookie Crisp, S'mores, Graham S'mores with a Z, Child Obesity O's, Blueberry Muffin Tops, for goodness sakes. It got so bad that in 1987, General Mills came out with a cereal that was simply called Ice Cream Cones. And I don't know if people were buying it because it tasted like ice cream cones or for the free gumballs it came with. That's a... It's like giving cigarettes at a tanning salon. We're gonna get you one way or the other. <laughs> but the one that really gets me is this one. Rice Krispy Treats cereal. <laughs> what a journey we have been on to get to this destination. We started with a nice, healthy, nutritious breakfast cereal that we wasted no time adding sugar and marshmallows to to make a delicious American treat, which of course was commercialized and mass distributed. And then someone was like, hey, wait a minute. Oh, hold on, I'm getting something. What if we made a cereal based on a treat that was based on one of our cereals? <laughs> wow, Kellogg's, could you be any more full of yourself? Okay, but the question is, if we use the past to predict the future, where is this cycle taking us? And if you're there with me, that's right, Rice Krispie Treats cereal treats. <laughs> that is inevitable. And uh, my wife and I made these over the summer. Here's the irony. Rice Krispie Treats cereal is disgusting. It is seriously awful. But Rice Krispie Treats cereal treats were delicious. <laughs> They were better than the original. I'm telling you, go home, try it, but uh, be careful how many people you tell because if it gets too popular, Kellogg's may think it's a good idea to make Rice Krispie Treat cereal treat cereal, and everyone knows that that would taste terrible. In fact, I've gone ahead and graphed uh, here. You've got your taste versus your generation, and as you can see, with every subsequent generation, you see a pattern emerging with an ever, you know, improving marshmallowy treat with an ever worsening cereal. <laughs> Thank you, you guys have been great. Enjoy the rest of the show.